eye service. I don't. If I have anything I will say, I will say it before anyone and clear my mind. Distinguished Senator Ningi, Samai Lakau, you are a northern senator. And I'm saying it on, in the chamber of the Senate. I'm not a second class northerner. I will be sitting here. Some of the things that are happening within the Northern Senators Forum doesn't get to people like me. This is the person that will give me the information. So what makes me feel somehow the day we came for the meeting in the Senate President's office, in fact, I didn't want to attend that meeting. It was one of your eight that insisted I must be there. If I'm not there, it would mean something. I said, let it mean. I was chairing a subcommittee meeting in the ad hoc of disbursement then, but I now I was the last person to be there. And why did I go there? Why did I go there? Why did I go there? If there's anything, we agreed at that meeting, nobody will go to the press. I was asked to comment. I reluctantly comment. Uh, let me use the words of uh, uh, Senator Abaribe. In the Ninth Assembly, he will always say, I'm reluctantly agreeing to it. I reluctantly agreed to, to, to make a comment. And when I made a comment, I said, if anybody said he has seen anything, provide the evidence. And since the evidence will be given to Senate President, Senate President knows where to take those evidences. And we will know the truth or otherwise of those evidences. But going to the press, we should not go to the press. In the morning, when I saw a message from Samai Elakau, I felt we should have acted as senators of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I felt so sad when I saw it. And that message is going round. Look at the content. Look at the English. Is it senators? Is that our quality? Is that our standard? Mr. President, we will deal with the issue of the, Senate, of the, of the budget, but we have to also deal with our ethical standard in the Senate. Thank you, Mr. President. Here, here, point of order. Point of order. Point of order. Point of order. Uh, uh, Senator Jeremy. Mr. President, uh, sitting as chair, distinguished colleagues, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for yielding the floor to me. I thought when the Chairman of Appropriations spoke, it was as clear as crystals that there was a misunderstanding of the figures. When he came up with the GOEs and all the agencies on first line charge, there is no difference between the figure he reeled out and the figure purported to be padded. I thought with that, that matter would have been rested by Senator Ningi saying that this three point something billion, uh, trillion was not part of the budgetary provisions printed out for us. That would have settled this matter. We are going forth and back on these issues and coming up with issues of the budget and individual uh, issues concerning what came to our various constituencies. If we want to go into those issues, all of us are culpable. Some senators here 
so-called senior senators got 500 million each. I am a ranking senator. I didn't get. Did I go to the press? Most of you got. And yes, if we want to go into those issues, excuse me, if we want to go into those issues, yes. So I think that I think that I think that Senator Ningi, Senator Ningi. That is my position. Now you see the wala. No, no, no. Quite all right. Point of order. Million pro. in public, man.
Thank you, I said, please. No, that, that's good. Thank, thank you, I said. Uh, thank you, I said. Let's continue. I want to appeal to my decision. Yeah, but 
Should approach the chair any longer, Senator Ali. Uh, Senator Ali, please. I, 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 I won't know. No, I want to take control. Please, please. for business, sir. Point of order. Point of order. Extension of time. Mr. President, the, Mr. President, sitting as chair, distinguished colleagues, I rise pursuant to order 8 sub 3 to ask for extension of time to enable us to see beyond 2 p.m. I so move, Mr. President. Mr. President, sitting as chair, I second the motion that the Senate do extend its time in order to complete the items on the order paper. I so second. Distinguished colleagues, a motion has been moved and seconded that this August Assembly do extend the time of our sitting beyond 2 p.m. Those in support of the motion have moved and seconded say aye. Those again say nay. The ayes have it. Let me uh, point out section 62 of our rules. Whenever the President of the Senate or the Chairman rises, as in this case during a debate, any senator then speaking or offering to speak shall sit down and the Senate, or if it is in the committee, shall be silent so that the president of the Senate or sitting as chairman may be heard without any interruption. It means that every senator should drop his hand. It also means that every senator should be seated and no noise. 
section 66 of our rules. Nobody becomes a senator unless he has gone through the rudiments of primaries of election and being sworn in, and therefore we have processes. The same way this chamber has processes and procedures. So whenever we make noise or move around, we must not forget that we are under strict rules of our standing orders, the rules of the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We are, we are here today. Others will come tomorrow. Some of us may not come again. Some of us may come again. So it's important for us to obey the rules. So the Senate President is standing. Section 66. The President of the Senate, or the Chairman, after having called the attention of the Senate or of the Committee to the conduct of a Senator who persists in irrelevance or tedious repetition, either of his own arguments or of the arguments used by other Senators in debate, may direct him to discontinue his speech. That is 66.1. 66.2 also gives the Senate President the power to order the Sergeant at Arms to work out such a Senator from the day's proceedings. Minority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President, sitting as Chair, distinguished colleagues. I stand, my name is Abba Moro. I represent the very good people of the Benue South Senatorial District. And by the grace of God and the support of my colleagues, the minority leader. Mr. President, I want to appreciate the debates have gone on so far in the course of the motion moved by the chairman of the Senate Committee on Appropriation. Mr. President, I want to anchor my comment on this issue from two perspectives. From the perspective of the budget, from the perspective of the meetings that have been held this far on this issue, and then from the perspective of the derogatory and on the mining comments that have been made on my position and the position of others as minority leaders. Mr. President, first, from the perspective of the budget. As has been noted, Mr. President, senior colleagues, this budget, this budget is a product of painstaking efforts by the executive and the National Assembly. National Assembly, the Senate, and the House of Representatives. And all of us here, directly or indirectly, have been involved in the process. And we all know that in the process of making a budget, everybody, either at the level of the committee or at the level of the Senate at plenary or the House of Representatives, makes contributions. And if we have observations, as to whatever is not correctly put in perspective from what majority of the people have advanced. We all know the procedure for addressing such issues. And I think in this instant case, we have not done that. We have not done that. And I don't know what it means to some people, but I know that this Senate is supposed to be a Senate of matured minds. And in the process, therefore, we must Surrender our interests to the interests of this very institution and the institution of the country called Nigeria. To do otherwise is certainly irresponsible. And I may bold to say here that Nigeria is not an island on itself. There are other parliamentary institutions in other countries. And so when something untoward like this begins to happen, I think we must reflect very soberly and get ourselves back on the right tracks. And that is the reason why I say here that this budget, I understand that my brother here, Senator Nimri, had made some observations about the budget. Mr. President, I want to inform you that I attended that meeting 
of Northern Senators with you that day. Due to the respect that I have for you and the respect that I have for the leadership and the institution of Northern Senators. And when we got there, observations were made. And I think the conclusion that we arrived at that time was that these documents on the observations must be presented to the Senate President. And we agreed, even informally, that if there are any anomalies here, they can be corrected by the either corrigendum or uh, amendment to the, to the budget, or that the leadership will take note of the anomalies and correct them in the subsequent budget. If at all. And so, as a member of the Northern Senators Forum, I feel offended that a press conference was addressed, interviews were granted on an issue that is already before the Senate. I think it's inappropriate. And I told the, Senate, the Deputy Senate President that, look, I didn't give anybody any permission to speak on my behalf on that matter anymore. And so we have gotten here. I think it's very simple. That now that the Senate Committee on Appropriation has provided the correct version, this debate ordinarily should end. I'm not grandstanding. And so this thing must be put in proper perspective. And I'm happy, Mr. President, that you have done the right thing now, that all of us are sober, because the rule is there for us to play according to it. And if any senator violates any of these rules, Chief Whip, you know the consequence. It's not correct that we come and display ourselves here like children every day, shouting at ourselves, and then we'll be holding some persons who walk to the Senate presidency and sit there more than 10 times in the, at a sitting, distracting the, 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 the process of our lawmaking. And then blackmailing everybody and holding people to ransom. Uh, Mr. President, I think this is unacceptable. And so, the figures are there for everybody to see now. The lie is there for everybody to see now. And we must do the, the right thing. Rather than pandering to our egos and the rest of them, I think we should do the right thing by tendering an unreserved, <laughs> unconditional apology to this Senate. Yes. Yes. Having, having said that, Mr. President, you will recall that in this Senate, after the ouster of some persons from the leadership of the minority, my colleagues unanimously on a motion by my other statesman, distinguished Senator Alero, to nominate me to replace the minority leader. Instantly, Senator Ned Boko suggested that everybody who supported my nomination at that meeting should sign there and then. And we got 31 uh, signatories out of 41, 49. Before the plenary the following day, we got additional 10, making it 41 that we presented to you here by my colleague, Senator Now. That was the basis of which you announced my name as a new minority leader selected by the other minority parties, including Senator Osita Ngutu. And so why we aspire to get certain things at certain, positions, at certain points, if we don't get, let heaven not fall. Because this is heaven falling or not heaven falling. So I was duly nominated, I was duly elected, and I have been doing my work here. And so, Mr. President, I want to at least address this issue of me not doing the work of opposition, and we're not doing the work of opposition. It's not correct. Mr. President, according to Section 26, 27, there shall be a minority leader of the Senate who will be nominated from the minority parties in the Senate. Two, the minority leader shall liaise with the Senate majority leader. B, second motions for the parties on major issues. C, second motions on formal and non-partisan business of the Senate. D, perform such other duties as the President may allocate to them. Mr. President, 
There is no motion here that I have not seconded. <laughs> and even today, even today, I have consulted and liaised with the Senate Majority Leader more than five times. So on a very serious note, I think we are doing our work here. Let me say that as a minority leader, I will not just stand and criticize policies of government for the sake of it. All we want for this country is stability, growth, progress, and creating the highest happiness for the highest number of Nigerian people. That, to my mind, is not necessarily achieved through confrontation and unnecessary criticism. And so, I want all of us the federal government of Nigeria is the federal government of Nigeria. It's not an APC federal government. It's not a PDP federal government. And I think, in the spirit of the founding fathers of federalism, we must all work together for the benefit of everybody. And that is exactly what I am going to do. That is what exactly the minority leadership of this Senate is going to do. Thank you, Mr. President. Have you listened to the State of the Nation Address? by the minority leader, very able minority leader, who has been doing his work. It is not the Senate that accuses you that you are not doing your work. It could be an individual's uh, view, that maybe because you are not like Mike Tyson, you, you have not boxed anybody yet, they expected you to fight. I'm very, I'm very delighted with your speech. So because we have exhausted these issues, we will give uh, two people uh, maybe three, the opportunity to say something. The first person I would like, Senator Adero, you've spoken on the issue already. If you know you have spoken on the issue, please, if you have spoken on the issue, please give us time so that we give, or give a chance to those who have not spoken. The problem we have in the Senate, the problem we have in the Senate is that the Senate President has had the habit of inviting ranking senators most times to talk for more than ten times because he was thinking that they would be able to guide the Senate because almost 80 percent of the senators are new but where the ranking senators confuse even the new senators who are coming the Senate president the Senate president has the right to, to withdraw those privileges so uh, Senator Kau you posted on your Facebook page about the budget planning uh, you tell us whether the uh, Facebook page Address us so that we know whether your uh, your listing was hacked or not. Mr. President, my dear distinguished colleagues, I am Suleiman Abrahman Kau Sumaila, representing Kano South Senatorial District, NNPP from Kano. Mr. Speaker, I had, uh, Mr. President, very sorry, I had what our colleague, uh, Senator Solomon Adiola, present in his motion. Quite all right, Mr. President, I was in that meeting in your house, and we all agree that we will not in any way grant an interview or engage anybody on this issue. You promise to look into it, to the extent you ask Chief Whip of the Senate, who happened to be Deputy Chairman of Appropriation, whether he has knowledge on what is going on in the budget, and he responded to you that negatively, that no. Therefore, I quite agree and uh, affirm that position. And from that time up to today, there was no time I guaranteed an interview with any, anybody. All what happened, sir, is that after we left your house, I had in the morning the interview of Senator Abdul Ninji. I read it, I listened to it attentively. I realized that he guaranteed the interview before our meeting. Even in that case, it is not what we agree in our last meeting.
that we are not going to press. In the afternoon, there was a force at so many platforms, which I posted it to our Northern Senators Forum. Northern Senators Forum. There was no place and nobody hacked my account. And I stand to be corrected. Nobody hacked my account and I am not in agreement with what my brother Solomon presented to this Senate. It is total lie. I am not, I am not part of it. If for any reason, what I force to the Senate, uh, to the, our Northern Senators Forum, as a member of that forum, and it is exclusively for our own consumption. My intention is to call the attention of our brothers that see what is going on and see what is what people are saying. I am very busy during the weekend because of Ramadan, but there was no time. I guaranteed an interview. On my way to Kano, Senator Tambual called me, directed me, not even in, as my colleague, but as my big brother, that you must make sure, don't even in any way, guaranteed an interview with anybody on this issue. Senator Barrow, too, before I enter Kano, he do the same to me. And throughout, from Friday up to yesterday, I am busy my constituency, attending my routine tasks here. Second lesson, with the due to respect to our colleagues, we are not in any way intend to undermine either the president, Senate president, or the Senate. We are matured enough. We knew this business. We all agree that we are leaders. And we understand or we understood our constitutional responsibility. One of it is oversight. Constitutionally, we must make sure that there is scrutiny on whatever is going in related to federal government expenditure. Mr. President, with due respect to our colleague, how many of us has time to go through this budget? How many of us? I have a, some items here in the budget, sir. No, 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 no. I just want to draw our attention. 36 items ranging to 40, 57 billion naira without location. Let me tell you the last one. You will understand what we are complaining. And you will understand our appeal. And Mr. President, sir, you agree with us that most of what happened during the budget, you are... For example, number 36, ERGP 2021 20, 29 20. Senator Kao, Senator Kao, please, uh, I've withdrawn your protection. I will explain something to you. We are trying to remain one senate you have not denied the post that you made uh Jesus senator Olamilekong, do you have the post that you made yes. can you read it out yes. no no it's important yes. because he's saying he stands by his post please can you i uh, just just uh, uh number You are not hearing me. You are, you are not hearing me. I want. I said. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, wait, 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 Senator Kau. I want you to. Okay, since you don't have it, Senator, let me look. Up. You are the mover of the motion. Okay, Senator Jua. Senator Jua. On that Can you can you read what Senator Kau posted? No, no, I want him to read it again. Because, no, because you are not interested. You, yeah, yeah, okay, so use your mic and read out what you posted. Okay. 
Me say that she do something. That's a good one. I am not the originator and I am not the maker of this. I am not the maker. I am not the maker. <laughs> this is Mr. Tokawo. On the Northern Senators Forum, you made a post which was supposed to be part of the transcription of Senator Ningi's uh, interview. I'm coming. I want you to, because you also listen to the interview, we have the full version of the interview uh, on the before. This uh, uh, Senate leader, what is necessary is that we must all be given the opportunity. This is democracy. Nobody must be shot. Nobody, no, nobody's mouth must be shot. This is democracy. Everybody has a right to express himself. And we must, you also have a right to get to the bottom of this. Now, please read what you reposted or posted. I, 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 you can, please read, sorry, yeah. please read what, read what you posted. I just saw it in circulation and I posted it to our platform which is exclusively for the Northern Senators Forum, breaking. For the first time in Nigeria history, today we are operating two different budgets. One budget approved by National Assembly, signed by Mr. President Bola Tinimbu, and the one implemented by Presidency. The one approved by us is 25 trillion, while one operating by federal government is 28 trillion. Apparently, we discovered 3 trillion was inserted into the budget without location. This is the highest budget funding happened in Nigerian history under Senator Atwabio Watch. We resolve as people representative to see Mr. President on this issue. On this issue, which fact and people to ask him, with fact and people to ask him if he is aware with this embarrassment or not. Then from there we will take action. Let Nigeria be patient with us. This is national issue. It affects all Nigerian irrespective of party, tribe, or religion. Senator Abdul Ningi, Chairman, Senators Northern, uh, Sen Northern Senators Forum, BBC House, Saturday 9, March 2024. Now, please be seated. What you have read there, that the federal government is operating two budgets, 25 trillion or 28 point something trillion as distinct from what the Senate passed. I just want to ask you a simple question. As a member of the Senate, I don't know whether you are also a member of the Appropriation Committee. Did the Senate pass 25 trillion? The Senate passed 28 trillion. Your honesty is appreciated. But what was reposted or posted by you on the Northern Senators Forum is that for the first time in Nigeria's history, we have the highest budget padding. And that the Senate passed 25 trillion, while the federal government is operating 28 trillion. You see, in a tense atmosphere like Nigeria, coming from distinguished senators, reposted by distinguished senators, posted by distinguished senators, originated or otherwise, that post even mentions Senator Ningi as chairman of Nigerian Governor, uh, Northern Senators Forum. And you, knowing that that post was injurious to the reputation of the National Assembly, you have been a member of the National Assembly in the House of Reps. You've also been a liaison officer. By the grace of God today, you are a senator. Do you think that reposting falsehood to tarnish the image of the National Assembly is the right thing for a, senate, a distinguished senator to do? It is not, but Mr. President, it is exclusively for Northern Senators Forum to draw their attention to draw their attention on what is going on. I can't do it. Now, distinguished colleagues, distinguished uh, colleagues, distinguished colleagues, distinguished colleagues, 
the thing which your late Senator Kawo has, uh, has made mention of the fact that the post was not meant for the public, it was meant for Northern Senators. For, Northern Senators, for them to know exclusively what was happening in the country, the operation of two budgets. You see, it brings us back to the fact that are we right or are we wrong? The Swiss Senate President, you are, mem you are a member of Northern Senators Forum. Do you agree with this post that was meant for you and, and for you, Billion? Well, uh, what happened is quite unfortunate. And I don't agree with it. But what happened is quite unfortunate. Because, like you said, Abdul Mingi is one of the most respected senators here. And uh, we had the course, quite okay, as said by uh, speakers you know, who spoke before me, that he approached us about his observations within the budget. And a meeting was held, for the purpose of emphasis, it was held in your guest house, together with uh, the likes of uh, Senator Lalon, Senator Sani Musa, and the rest. And we all agreed. We all agreed that look, yes, we are all humans. Assuming, but not agreeing that there were mistakes. If you have anything, bring that forward. Bring that forward. When you bring them forward, we will now sit down in a tripartite fashion. Because the budget process is an inclusive process, including the Senate, the House of Reps, and the Executive. We we'll then call the House side, call the Executive side. Let's sit down. This is an observation we've seen. And how do we correct them? If at all, there are genuine observations. And I told him, look, we've had this kind of uh, situation before. I told Osari Musa Bin, uh, where he was in the 8th Senate, we had similar situation, 9th Senate. Someone brought up certain things that felt, you know, okay, we look at that. And then later, we found out uh, there was nothing. And then we said, look, we even have uh, a clause in the Abolition Act, the Corrigional Clause, that can be used to correct human errors, if any. That, okay, let's keep this something until we are able to have these uh, observations made. And because before then he raised two issues, three issues. That number one, they had wanted to go and uh, go to the press. They wanted to go and see Mr. President. I said, thank you that uh, <clears throat> you didn't do that because these are things within the realm of uh, observations. Probably if experts see those things, uh, we will be able to sort out whatever you know, misunderstanding, if any. You know, with, within what uh, you're able to put forward. So it's quite unfortunate that uh, this came out, you know, in the press, in the press. But, like you said, he didn't say anything. What he did was to make that post. Because I used to speak to him, like you said. I called him. I said, I saw what is happening now, but don't make any comment. Do not make any... That's after the interview. So don't make... Uh, he didn't make any comment, but he, he posted. After I saw the posting, I called him. I said, please, don't say, don't, our agreement is that we shouldn't say anything. Let's not put the cart before the horse. So, and he agreed, he didn't make any statement thereafter. Only the posting that he made. Yes, I agree that the posting was not quite proper. It's not good for, for the posting to be made, you know, considering the fact that we have all agreed. But he didn't make any statement outside. And even yesterday I called him. I said, look, why is this thing going on? He said, yes, I want you hear me say anything outside. That all I, all I did is just what he repeated here, that he only posted in a platform for us to know what is happening, but he didn't make any statement outside. That's it. That Ningi granted an, you know, an interview. That he wanted to tell us, look at what we discussed, but look at what Ningi has done. So that's why he sent it, because he told me that the meeting was not for, it was not only for the leadership. Other senators were around. So he couldn't call every, everyone to say, this is what Nengi has done. So that's why he decided to post it on that platform for us to see, because so many of us were there. So that's what, even yesterday, I spent out about that, I was talking to him. He said he would not make any statement. We are, he has agreed, he's a gentleman, he's a senator, he will not do that. So this is the reason that he gave. I just submit. You attended a meeting in the guest house that I attended. Senator Ningi said that he has made some discoveries through consultants. 
different from what he partook as a member of the appropriation committee, as a senator, and as a member of the Senate during plenary that passed the budget. Now, he promised to make available those observations to the Senate President and to yourself. Has he made those observations available to you? He has not. And to be fair to Kao, he called me and said, look, this is what we agreed to, but look at what Nigi did. That's what he, you know, he told me. <laughs> Don't. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I think uh, the two senator, Jimo Ibrahim. The two senator, Jimo Ibrahim. Jimo Ibrahim. The Zoom Senator, Jimo, Jimo Ibrahim. Uh, Mr. Please, I have the floor, please. Mr. Senate President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, my distinguished colleagues, my, name's, my name is Jimo Ibrahim. I represent Ondo South Senatorial District. Mr. Senate President, everything can go wrong, but one thing must not go wrong. Only one thing, the law. And the prophecy of what anybody will do is in the law. And the law in this is the Appropriation Act of the National Assembly, which has casted integrity, doubt in the integrity of Nigeria. The painful thing of all this story and the narrative is the fact that tomorrow, the federal government wants to go out there to borrow money to develop Nigeria economy. Just go to it, and you will see you have two budgets. The lender will ask a simple question. Where are you putting this fund? The first budget or the second budget? This has happened to me before. So, Mr. President, President we are sitting here today to make regulations to ensure that the integrity of the federal government is not in doubt. I don't want to talk about the integrity of the Senate in which you are privileged to preside. As Senate President of Nigeria, by March 23rd, remember, you will be going to address the General Assembly of the United Nations in Geneva. The question will be put onto you, and you can put me on notice, that Mr. Nigeria Senate President, you passed two laws in respect of your budget. Which of the laws are we here to look at? Now, I will say that my own contribution to this debate is that we should go straight into the prayers. The motion is on the floor. We need to look at the prayers. And if we need to add additional prayer, so be it. And then we'll be able to close this matter. Because if we don't go into the prayers and discuss it, the motion makes no, no meaning. A motion is before, by law, by instrument of law, by our practice and procedure here. That motion must be concluded by looking into the prayers. What are we, you know, I know I appreciate the fact that you want fair hearing. I agree with that. There should be fair hearing. Senate, distinguished Senator Nigi has also spoken extensively. But the key point is that Adam Senator uh, Yayi has brought a motion before us and there are prayers there. Let's go into that prayer and let us see which of the prayers we are passing in the plenary. And this is very important. This is fundamental because as we sit here, our children are looking at the procedure and the processes that we are making two laws at the same time on the same issue. And that is not acceptable. So to me, Mr. Senate President, I think the right thing to do right now is to go into the prayers. If you are generously comfortable to listen to more debates, fantastic. But we keep repeating ourselves about the pains of lying, about the pains of economizing lies and truth. So we should go into the prayers. I so advise, Mr. Senate President, and my very distinguished colleagues.
Let's go into the prayers and so that we can go. It's already 2 24. Are we going to sleep here? Let's go into the prayers and do additional prayers and move on. The mic. The chief whip of the Senate. Distinguished colleagues, I am Mohamed Alindumi, representing Borno South. I have listened. Most of us have spoken. I don't need to remind us that we are senators. I don't need to also remind us that we are here as brothers and members of the highest body. That's the Senate. We are here having in mind also that we can disagree, but to agree. In fact, it is common in legislation to even go to the extreme, throwing tears because tempers rise. But when it comes to the totality of the image of the Senate, we should be careful. It is not about Ningi now only. If we are talking about Ningi in this room, but it is about all of us outside. This thing has happened. It has happened. And Ningi was wrong. It was wrong. In the first instance, if you all remember, this thing reared its head before. When after presentation of the budget, there were allegations from the North that it was skewed in favor of the South. And the figure was even posted on our platform, the Northern Senators Forum, by Wadada. And I spoke to him this morning. The total capital in there was 8.9 or thereabout. But the total of the said skewedness total 15 trillion. And I told them from the word go. This is wrong. So it died down. When we engage the senators, I mean the consultant, it was agreed by the northern senators. Quite okay. And after that, Kau and uh, Lingi approached me and told me that there are certain things in the budget that were not right. I said, bring it. They said, no. We are going to talk to Senate President, and I should be there. I said, no. If you are sure that the North has been so changed, put the figures down and let's go public. But that was not there. Wait. When you are speaking, I did not interfere. It's so simple now. My chairman wanted to go out yesterday. My chairman wanted to go out yesterday. He called me. We are doing a press conference. I said, on what? He said, on this budget. I said, did you get the details that they are talking about? You said, no. I begged you not to talk. That we are coming here today, get ready with your papers, and put it before our colleagues. He did a wonderful job by even tracing where the so-called three trillion has gone. What I'm expecting from us, please, is to move forward. And how do we move forward? I told Ningi in here that he made a mistake, that he should stand up and apologize to us first, then apologize that, look, this even figure that I'm looking for, three trillion, is here. I'm sorry for the embarrassment I've called you. That is what I'm suggesting. Please, distinguished colleagues, some of us or majority of us are here new, as we say. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's not new because you are ten, 10 months old or more. All I'm saying. Eh? Look, if I don't forget that I'm the chief. 
I'll carry with you now. Okay. Why are you not smiling now? I know this is a serious matter, but we have gotten to it. Had it been what uh, Ningi said, it's not, it's not even traceable. But it's clear here that the three trillion, if you add it up, is there, and you put it by 25, it gives us the figure. So let us go and tell everybody that, look, three trillion is not missing. And uh, 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 Ningi should apologize. Uh, Ningi has uh, agreed to apply. I approached you. And I said, uh, uh, Ningi will apologize. You said, if he apologizes, chicken. So he's ready to apologize. Distinguished colleagues, leader. Leader, you, you, you end the debate because please, there's no need for us to talk for that. Let us uh, just hear from uh, my brother Adam Zoshimole, then a leader will speak. Mr. Senate President and my colleague Senators. I have listened attentively. My, names, my name is Adams Ali Oshomole. I represent the great people of Edo North in Edo State. And the only thing that I used to campaign to get to this house is my name, my pedigree, and my integrity. Some may have gotten here because they had resources. I got here because I had made a name. I came here to hope to build on that name, not to diminish it, not to distort it, and not to do anything that would be unexpected of somebody of my background. Number two, sir, I am a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I am not a senator of the North, nor am I a senator of the South. I am a Nigeria senator. These rules we agreed on in the first two, three cities, that we will operate irrespective of accident or birthplace, and even the factor of religion or any of those primordial sentiments. Because that is the only way a senior, Niger as a privileged Nigerians who sit on this Senate, I, I don't know anyone here who started his work on the floor of this Senate. We all have our various background, which our people must have seen and found us worthy of being elected. I want to plead that we must recognize we have the duty to uphold the finest standard of a legislature and defend the integrity of each and every one of us. As I listen to your prayers every day, Mr. Senior President, we talk about showing love to one another. Doing those things that will promote the peace, happiness, and unity of our great country. And yet, I am here wondering whether we have exactly come here to do everything that will promote hatred, everything that will promote division, Everything that would remind me of my accident or bad play for which I had no vote, I had no contribution, that was the exclusive decision of the God Almighty. It should neither be used to favor me nor should it be used to disfavor me. So I ask, sir, that after listening to everything, my plea is this. We've already been stripped naked in the market. And closing the door or opening the windows, we cannot now wrap it as if it has not been seen. The minimum requirement is for my brother, who I respect very much on account of being vocal, I like vocal people. He has energy, I don't have enough energy. But I have seen him make very valuable contributions in the past on the floor of this city. And I think he can still remedy that. Happy agreed that some things went wrong. Because the question you have put, Mr. President, is how much what was the figure in the bill, in the appropriation bill that was, that was approved? And somebody answered 28 billion. 
a trillion. Therefore, any suggestion that it was 25 is simply a lie. The problem of trying to defend one lie is that you have to speak to more lies in order to protect and defend one lie. I think we'll be uh, Senator Ningi, who I respect a lot, has a duty even to his own children that he will not be the man who will be in the reported in the front pages of newspapers and electronic media all over the world and say something that he found out is not true. There is nothing wrong with making a mistake, but become a problem when you are not able to find the courage to own up to your mistake. Particularly when in terms of balance of interest, you would rather clean up what is dirty than to pretend that it is clean. So I want to plead to each and every one of us that let's allow Nigi, having now read everything, and even my comrade, um, Senator no, Kau, who posted something he said it was for Northern governors. Even not, uh, sorry, Northern senators. Even he knows that Northern senators deserve to be told the truth. Northern senators did not form association for the spreading of falsehood. It is meant to promote the unity of the North and justice and fairness, which can only be found on the basis of facts and truth. So if all of these errors have taken place, and all of us have become suspect in the Nigeria bar of public opinion, the way to go, in my view, is for both of them to re uh, recount what they have said and to say that and to say that they didn't say so, or if they said so, that they made a mistake of the head, not of the heart, and ask that they be forgiven. Because it is already in the market. You can't pretend it never happened. I associate myself completely with the very, very valuable and articulate presentation of uh, Senator Sani, I believe, of, uh, of Niger State, and several other very valuable contributions. But let us remember, each time we try to destroy any one of us, we are destroying all of us. Because if one lacks integrity, and we are found to associate with anyone who likes integrity, they say it is better of the same feathers that flock together. May that not be our portion. Mr. President, this matter needs to be treated in a manner that will restore the confidence of the Nigerian people in the institution of the National Assembly. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this is Senator Karimi. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you for your distinguished service to the nation. My colleagues, what is important here is our integrity as a whole. What has been established here is the fact that the so-called three trillion pardon is a lie. Two, the appropriation made this year where those items on um, sacred transfers were not included is not different from what have been happening for years. That is the standard that will make our budget. So all the information that is being passed around was misinformation, misinformation by Senator Ningi and Senator Kau. So we have to establish that one before we can move forward. And they have to own up to their mistakes. Uh, uh, this is Senator uh, Oba. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm Senator Ifan Oba. President, um, what we are battling with is the soul of this Senate. 
And I think it's very, very important. Uh, we have had uh, different um, colleagues pleading that uh, we should, uh, that they have, they have considered to apologize. But even in that apology, Mr. President, I believe after meeting you during the last, in the last meeting you had with them, they would have um, come to you in agreement of what you had reached with them, present their facts before you, before going to the press. I think there should be, I think there should be, um, we would need to look at the prayers. Because if we continue to go to the press and try to create ethnic sentiments in this country, um, it will continue with this net will never be won. So I think we should go to the prayers, Mr. President, so we don't, uh, we don't overlook this uh, issue. Let's go to the prayers, Mr. President. Senator Akwashiki, after that, the leader, then we close. Mr. Chairman, my very distinguished colleagues, I remain Senator Akwashiki Gojari within Nasarawa North Central District. Mr. Chairman, I think uh, to some extent we don't need to waste time on this issue. Yes, I've agreed. A lot of things went wrong. Even that meeting that you made in Northern Senators, I was not there. And our God knows here in this place, I asked the chairman of the Northern Governors, uh, sorry, Northern Senators. I said I had you had a meeting with the President of the Senate yesterday. I was not invited. And he apologized to me that next time they're going to be invited. And you see, let me correct something here. That most of us, including both Kao and Ningi, they are ranking parliaments. They came through the House of Reps. Parliamentaria, yes. It's my, uh, Kao said he was not the person that constructed that statement. I agree with him in totality. But I read the statement in the platform of the Northern Senators. And to some extent, knowing fully when you go through the, 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 the text or the statement, you will know whether it is not constructed by Senator Kawu or not, because he will have tossed it with a caveat to us, the Northern Senators, that be aware or be informed, this is not from me. Is a hand one. Because I was going through it and I refused, I deliberately refused to say one on that issue. Because he is a leader. Two, Mr. Chairman, sir, a lot of people have spoken. Uh, even though the Chief Whip has said that he has spoken on personal ground with Senator Ningi. And you also spoke to, to Kao. Okay, you have not spoken to, to Ningi. Ningi is the chief actor of what we are discussing today. Ningi wanted to open some, some, some clothes again on the issue. But we should allow him, give him a time to speak again, instead of going forward and coming backward. He is sitting here in the plenary with us. Mr. Mr. Chairman, sir, why I am saying this, because... Ninji also, he has not denied the issue that you are in agreement for him to submit whatever he has to you as a leader. So that you should look into it and take an appropriate decision. Because he has not done that, that is why we have found ourselves where we are today. What is the next thing? The next thing is to give him, even if just two minutes to speak, and our leader, the minority leader of this Senate, who is Abba Moro. Abba Moro is our leader of all of us that are sitting here, he has spoken on behalf of us. He requests for one thing, that we should give them time to speak. Abba Mora has spoken, and since he sat down, and I can see the mood of even the, 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 some, our colleagues, when he spoke on behalf of us, I think Mr. Chairman gave them the opportunity in line with the request of the minority leader, our leader. Though, even though somebody said, uh, have asked uh, one of, uh, of them that they, they didn't, we voted them. Like me, I'm a, senior, I'm a ranking senator. I signed for them. So they are our leaders. He has spoken. 
on behalf of us. Please, Mr. Chairman, for us to move forward. We were all of three the whole day. Give them the opportunity to speak to us again. Even if it means emotion, on top of motion, because we are wasting our time, please. Let them speak. They are sitting on the plenary here. And you can see our brother, Senator Ningi, he has always been quiet for the past one hour. Let's hear from him, Mr. Chairman, so that this matter, it is, somebody say it's Ningi today. It can be another talk for us tomorrow, please, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, let me... Let me say that uh, we have succeeded. If you look at the number of hands up, there are no longer many. So I think we have uh, exhausted. We have exhausted the issues, and uh, we have done well. My personal opinion is: Who is the secretary of the Northern Senators Home? Sadiq, I have not heard your voice because if your forum is used to posting things that will incite senators inside Nigeria. No, you are not the only one that has access to, the, uh, to, that, uh, to that forum. Even non-senators read what you post. And you can see premium, premium Times quoted you copiously from what they saw there. And many of them, some of them are saying, I have you in the worst scandal, uh, Tinebu, uh, operating two budgets, all sorts of things, and it's from there. So, it, and then the Senator Ndume has also pointed out that that is not even the first time. That there was a time that Senator Warada said the North has been cheated and then pointed out uh, a, a budget of uh, 8.9 uh, trillion. Was it billion? Trillion. And said that out of 8.9 trillion, out of 15 trillion, that, yes, that, that out of. Uh, I, I, I said this, uh, distinguished colleagues, you remember, in a closed session here last time when the budget was brought, and there was this also uh, figures flying around that not has been so changed. Out of the 15 trillion capital, only two point something was for the north. So I, and uh, it was posted on our platform equally just for information. And I called our dad at that time, and I said, do the arithmetic, you will discover that the budget submitted by Mr. President has 8.9 trillion as the total capital. And then you say now that 15 trillion is in the capital, how does it add up? That was why Wadada pulled down that uh, posting and the matter died down. So this one too should be buried like that. <laughs> Maybe you will just say something on the next post, because uh, the other one was uh, 15 trillion. Uh, Senator Walada was 15 trillion, and quickly Senator Ndume corrected him that only 8 trillion was actually capital, not 15 trillion, and he pulled it down. So otherwise, uh, it would have been reposted and reposted and reposted, and it will get into the ears of the market people in the north, and they will think that they are being cheated. Now, as Secretary of the Forum, uh, yeah, maybe you are not the administrator of that thing. What is, what is your take on all these discussions? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, sitting as Chair. Uh, let me make some categorical statements so that to put the record straight. Um, the Northern Senators Forum is just basically an interest group. And in political system, everybody forms a forum with specific interest group. That interest group is not supposed to be purely political. It has economic perspective, it has cultural perspective. Mr. President, recall that when we visited you in the guest house, after I gave my vote of thanks, I categorically told you that as a scientist, I know how data can be interpreted vertically, horizontally, diagonally, based on the inference or interest of the researcher. 
That interpretation too can be influenced by availability, completeness or incompleteness of data. And I recommended that you get a contractor, like you, you said you wanted to get you know, a consultant. I told you that you need to get a consultant to look at this properly when it is given to you. Mr. President, for the records, because we are saying Northern Senator, Northern Senator, I am the Secretary of Northern Senators. This data and this information, I am not privy to it, just like almost all Northern Senators. And I think Senator Ningi was clear about that, both in your presence and even on this floor. He has not pretended about that, that we don't know what is the issues here. And to me, we said, Mr. President, let's get this information clarified before we embarrass the Senate, the National Assembly, or the country. Mr. President, Senator Kau says something and it's important. He says we missed it. There was a mix-up. He is saying that that interview granted by Senator Ningi invariably came even before this process is started. Oh, okay. No, he said that. No. Okay, fine. It's not true. Okay, fine. Uh, Mr. President, Mr. President, my point, my point clearly is that, Chief Whip, can you please control the floor for us, please? Mr. President, Mr. President, our position is very clear in Northern, in the forum, that the data, that information is not available for us yet to be able to take any position. Mr. President, the interview granted by Ningi, Senator Ningi, is his personal opinion. I just want to make that clear here. It's not the position of Northern Senators. <laughs> Lastly, Mr. President, to me, as a citizen of this country, and as a Senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, what is important to me in all of this rancor is to clarify and come out transparently and strongly Particularly, this being led by those who allege that the budget the National Assembly passed is 28.7 trillion and not 25 trillion, so that the whole world, the whole country, will see clearly that there is an error somewhere. It's as a result of lack of enough data available to those who are analyzing that that situation has been made. Mr. President, lastly, why I was worried about this is I know that people will think Nigeria is a weak country. Nigeria is a strong country. We say our institutions are weak. Our institutions are not as weak as a budget will be passed and we will be operating a different budget. Nigeria is too strong. Nigeria is too strong for that. And it's very important the whole world knows that that is not going to be possible in this country. Thank you very much. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, sitting as chair, very distinguished senators of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Mr. Chairman, for the very first time, I stand up to speak, not as the leader of the 10th Senate, but as Senator Michael Okpayemi Bamidele, C.O.N., representing the people of Ikiti Central Central District. Four quick issues to raise. Number one, number one, I stand with due respect to say that what my big brother, distinguished Senator Abdul Ningi, who I respect so well, planned to do or set out to do was tantamount to a civilian coup, which has failed. And in doing this, he wanted to use the platform of Northern Senators Forum. God bless all those who have dissociated themselves as members of Northern Senators Forum. Number two, I pay growing tribute to His Excellency Senator Tambua. Aminu Wasir Tambua, and to His Excellency Senator Ahmad Lawa, 
Why am I doing this? They had very peaceful tenure. And I was one of those instrumental. I'm also speaking as a Southerner for the first time. The attempt to take the election of the leadership of this Senate beyond June 13, 2023, must stop. 60 something senators voted for Godwin Akpadio. 40 something senators voted against Godwin Akpadio. The will of the majority. Every day, there have been a few, just a few. And that's one of the reasons I will pay tribute to Senator Tamboa. He didn't pretend by where he stood. But after that, some of them got up on the floor of this Senate and said, election is over. Let's work together as senators of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. A few have refused to do this. And that's why it's always about Akpadio, never about the Senate, never about the House of Reps, never about the Office of DG Budget. All of us pass this budget. Never about Mr. President who signed this budget. It's always about Akpadio. We have a momentum. This is a defining moment for all of us to say, if we're going to have a stable Senate, let us have one. It is not about North and South. It's about our rules. It's about the Constitution of the, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It's about our people who are hungry and deprived. Mr. President, sitting as chair, make no mistake about it. A few people who fear they will not give you more than one year to spend in this chair want to do everything possible before the 13th of June to remove you. And I am telling you, Mr. President and distinguished colleagues, distinguished, distinguished colleagues, and that's why I say I'm speaking as Senator Michael Opeyemi-Vanudele, not as the Senate leader. As the Senate leader, I've always done everything for you to stabilize the Senate. I'm speaking, I'm exercising my own privilege as a Senator. Now I am telling you, sir, I am telling you, sir, and I want Nigerians to know, I say for history, the last time the people of South South that you represent had a chance to be Senate President was over 40 years ago. The last time the entire people of the South had a chance to be Senate President was during a passenger regime when we went to the Southeast. Five people were elected because they were impeached in quick succession. But as soon as it left the South, we had peace and stability again because we will always cooperate. David Marx spent eight years. Senator Ahmad Lawa spent four years. Peaceful four years. Saraki, even with all he did, spent four years. He was not impeached. It is about Padio. It is about the South. You cannot understand why Senator Ningi, we want to use the name of Northern Senators Forum, even when most of them did not agree to this. Mr. President, I plead with you. This is an opportunity for us to follow our rules. If tomorrow the wisdom of the elders of this Senate prevail and the thing we should do otherwise, let's lock ourselves up in a closed door session and take a, another decision and go back to the world and recede for ourselves on whatever decision we take today. I beg all of you, we must do the right thing today. We did not start this fight. Senator Ningi took this to the public domain. Standing up to apologize here, even after he repeated that some people got 100 billion from this, this, this budget, some people got 60 billion. What, what apology are you expecting? Let us do the right thing, and I am saying it as part of the leadership of this Senate. I am not bothered. I, I was going to online, but, uh, just as this is going on, it's trending now that every senator got 500 million. My appeal to Nigerians is not about what was said there today, because I'm not going to deny that. But we have 12 months to implement 2024 budget. Let every Nigerian wait to see whether there is any of these senators who will not bring enough boreholes, enough solar street lights, enough road construction, and other projects, training and empowerment, that will be up to 500 million uh, naira. That is it. I am not protesting. If I got anything here, it is not money put in my pocket. 
They are constituency projects given to my constituency. And I'm not apologetic about it. Mr. President, please let us go into the prayers and do the right thing. to order 1B of the Senate Standing Order 2023 as amended, allow immediate deliberations of this matter and take appropriate action deemed fit in the overriding public interest and as a matter of urgent public importance to prevent breakdown of law and order. I think this has been taken. Those in support of prayer one say aye. aye. Those again say nay. The ayes are that has been taken. Prayer two. Take further necessary steps to correct the wrong impression in public domain of the 2024 budget created by the BBC interview and other national media houses and social media platform by Senator Abdul Ningi and amplified by Senator Suleiman Abdulaman Kawu through his uh, uh, post on Northern Senators Forum, uh, his Facebook account, and other social media platforms. Those in support of prayer to say aye. Just again say no. The eyes are there. Prayer three. Take any further decision as the Senate deems fit and proper to safeguard the integrity of the 2024 budget, which is pivotal to the revamping of the Nigerian economy. Uh, yes, Senator Dimo. President, my distinguished colleague, I have an additional prayer to add at the uh, appropriate time. Since we're not ready. The last one. Okay, I will allow the last one to go. Allow the Senate President to rule. Yes. Yes, sir. I, I, I stand by that. Okay. So that uh, 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 prayer three. Those in support say aye. Those against say no. The eyes are with yes, sir. So you can now come with your additional prayer. Yes, distinguished colleague. My additional prayer after um, we're trying to distill all our discussions in these hallowed chambers into this additional prayer by way of, uh, of sanction. Suspend Senator Abu Dinigi and suspend Senator Abu Dinigi for an initial period of 12 months. 12 months, yes, including his entitlement and privilege as Senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria for the 10th Senate. And made him to stay away from the National Assembly for the suspended period. Two, the Senate should send a, a warning letter to Senator Suleiman Abdurrahman Kao, and uh, this should be, should be warned for, to stop posting, you know, uh, inciting the formations that are not right, and then he should tell an apology he should, he should stop posting all those uh, information with a way of distorting facts. Uh, Mr. Senate President, I uh, so move on these two additional prayers because we cannot. I have the floor, please. I have the floor. I have the floor. Uh, it's these two important prayers are very important because we have to look at our rules. They are, this, they are issues of ethic procedures and as well as what we have been discussing since morning. So for purpose of clarity, Mr. Senate President, my first prayer is that the Senate should suspend Senator Abu Dinigi uh, for, for an initial period of 12 months, suspend his entitlement and privileges as Senator of the 10th Assembly or 10th Senate uh, make him stay away from the National Assembly during the period of suspension. Secondly, the Senate or this Senate should send a note of warning to Senator Suleiman Abdurrahman Kao and make him to apologize for posting the side statement about the appropriation act in his Facebook. Uh, it is a bad prayer. So I so I so move, Mr. President, I so move, Mr. President. Point of order. 
Uh, 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 the Senator Jimmy uh, uh, Ibrahim has moved a motion that in view of the foregone, all the discussions we have had here in the Senate and the events, the public uh, outlook that uh, the distinguished Senator Abdul Ningi uh, should be suspended for a period of 12 months uh, and uh, I, 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 I would like to. Oh, yes, Senator Davidone. Thank you, Mr. President. Distinguished colleagues. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, I rise to second the motion raised by distinguished Senator Jimo Abraham. The motion can be amended, but let it be Mr. Mr. President, Mr. President, I, I require your protection. Sir. Mr. President, distinguished. Somebody keep... Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, I rise, I rise to say... Mr. President, I rise to second... Suspension of Abdul Ningi and for a warning to be given to distinguished Senator Kau. And I do so, sir, with the full recognition that despite the ample opportunities to provide evidence to this House, no single shred of evidence has been provided. And on the back also, sir, of the opportunities to apologize to this House, given the gravity of the allegations made, we are yet to receive a single apology from either of the gentlemen. I so second. Uh, we have a motion on the floor. We have a motion on the floor, which has been seconded. Is there any amendment? Is there any amendment? Uh, is, uh, is there any amendment? Mr. President of the Senate, distinguished Senators, in my amendment, I want to invoke Order 95, Rule 4C. My, in my amendment, I want to invoke Order 95, Rule 4C. And Order 95, Rule 4C unequivocally states that the powers of the committee 
on petition ethics and privileges of the, of the Senate is to investigate misconduct of senators where there is alleged misconduct alleged misconduct of senators where there is so I want to invoke order 95 resources for it to be repaired to the ethics and privileges committee for investigation and report to the senate Okay, so yeah, please see the two senators. I think you have spoken before. Senator Sukwa, you have not said anything. You are raising your hand. Is it for amendment of the prayer? Yes. Asukwa, Asukwa. The microphone. Good afternoon, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues. My name is Senator Asukwa Epeyon, Senator representing Cross River South. I would like to amend the prayer as moved by Senator Jimo Ibrahim. I amend that the suspension period be reduced to six months. I so move. Amendment. Any second? Yes, yeah, Senator Vick. Thank you, Mr. President. I remain in Kiki Baranaga. I represent the people of River South East and Imperial District. Mr. President, I support wholeheartedly the amendment as duly moved by Senator Epeyon that the suspension period be reduced to six months. I so second. Mr. President, my amendment is we should be cautious and reduce whatever cognitive measure we are going to take. Let's learn from it. There's this popular Yoruba adage when another fall, you look at the back, what falls? And when a child falls, you look at the front. And I'm just amending that. Even we should allow Senator Ninja, Senator Kao, to even say that, sorry, let's give them that privilege. When we give them that privilege, when we give them that privilege, and the Senate now decided, and the, next, and the Senate now decided to even take a committee measure, we can reduce it to three months, which is okay, so that other people can learn from me, so that to serve as a, a, a detriment. Three months, three months, three months, but you were right to say six months, one year. No, let's forget, they are representing a senatorial. People are watching them for three months. Three months. Yeah, uh, yes. 
Thank you, Mr. President. It's me. Me, mommy. Thank you. The Senate President sitting in as chair. My name is Garba Musa Maidoki. It's on. My name is Garba Musa Maidoki, representing Kedi South Senatorial District, sir. Mr. President, having heard that most of what was said press without following the agreed position. Suspension for three months. Say aye. Aye. Don't again say nay. Yeah. The eye coming. Yeah. So the two incidents are thinking is hereby suspended for three months from all activities connected with the 10th Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Papa. Mr. President, sitting as chair, distinguished colleagues, I stand to move that the Senate reverse to plenary to enable the chair report to progress. I so move. Mr. President, sitting as chair, I second the motion that uh, 
Chairman, the Senate reverse to plenary to enable the chair report progress. I saw second. The two challenge, a motion has been moved and seconded that this Senate do revert to plenary to report progress. Those who are in support of the motion say aye. Those again say there. Yeah, clarification, yes. Uh, no, no, one clarification, uh, Mr. President. Senator uh, Jaribi made mention of 500 million. I think we should, we should give him the chance no, 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 to no. specify. No, it's good. It, let me explain. Let me explain. <laughs> Let me say what uh, That they got 100 billion, 500 billion. There was nothing like that in the budget. If you go through the budget, you will not see anybody getting 100 billion anywhere. That is the position. The Senate did not get anything like that. He got extra 500 million in the budget for projects in his place, not the rest of us. That was my position. And I also said that there was uh, Senator Yayi, the chairman of profession, has cleared the air of whatever insinuations there were. So there was no padding of 3.7 billion, and that's my position. And the Senate President should be apologized to by all those who have accused him. He is vindicated. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, uh, the Swiss colleagues. Um, yeah, no, please. Uh, the uh, the Swiss colleagues. I think uh, where Senator Jaribe's explanation that, uh, that, that Senator Ningi informed him that he had 500 million uh, worth of projects in his constituency, not 500 million cash. Uh, please. 
it's important for people to understand that Senator Jaribe has just explained himself that he said that Senator Ningi informed him that he, Senator Ningi, had 500 million naira worth of projects for his senatorial district. Not that he received cash of 500 billion. And not that all the senators had 500 billion. Because if you go out there now, the public may misunderstand and think that 